Hi, you guys. This is Calypso Vibes coming back to you again with another conversation slash reading today. Um, I am here to talk about the Alabama brawl, but also um, the aftermath, right? Like the after spill out of the Alabama brawl and like kind of my opinion on it. I kind of stayed away from it last week. Like, uh, you know, my partner's watching videos of it and stuff like that. And I was just like, yeah, I don't want to be low vibrational. I don't want to feed into that energy. And I'm kind of glad I still glad I did, even though this week it gave me the best chuckle ever because now people have made so much content. So now you kind of get to consume all the content that's been made about it. Um, but I have a lot of opinions about it. Um, my first opinion is uh, I, I don't care if someone gets offended or anything like that because, again, I'm not afraid of cancel culture. Cancel what? What you canceling? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm my own boss, my own business. I run my own stuff. Um, can't get me fired from nowhere. So I'm not worried about cancel culture here, but I am going to give my honest opinion only because I don't want to get flagged on YouTube. But um, I, don't con I don't condone the guy hitting the female with the chair once she was KO. Like, baby girl was already seeing Tweety Birds and he still clocked her ass anyway, even though... I also believe that once the melee begins, the melee be begins, right? Like there's this duel, you know, I think, did he go too far? Yeah, I, I, but I do think my guy was just feeling like, no, I'm, I'm hitting everybody, everybody going down. I'm defending everybody over here. Like, you know what I mean? So um, I then also seen Marlon Wayne's got a lot of clap back because there was this idea of like, let's be love, not war. And I'm like, he claims that, of course, he's he's not against blacks defending themselves. Like, of course, he, he wouldn't be on the side of the people who had entitlement and all this stuff. And I'm like, but he left a very open-ended interpretation, which was like, bro, no, you kind of get, you deserve the smoke you getting because you left an open-ended, uh, you know, open-ended, you know, interpretation for people to take it how they wanted to take it. And he, I guess he feels offended that blacks would assume that he was siding with the guys that assaulted the, you know, the the security guard. But I'm also like, man, you make enough money, bruh, that we could see you talking crazy. You know what I'm saying? Because I think at some point, um, you got some influential people who are going to start talking crazy because they're going to be trying to control the narrative coming out of that Alabama brawl. Right. And the narrative needs to fit that. Oh, no, they weren't. They weren't assaulting him. They were just drunk because I tell like I, as I was talking to my partner, I tell my partner, like, no, no disrespect. White people don't like being held accountable to racism. And it's the the, the narrative is now going to be painted around. Oh, they were intoxicated. Oh, they weren't in control of themselves because, you know, they were drunk and having fun. And he yelled at them and he disrespected them. Because you better expect all kind of narratives to now paint the blacks as being in the wrong um, on this issue. And they're not. Like the guy was doing his job and it doesn't matter if he was yelling at you or telling you to get your boat out, you know, off the damn docks. Should have got your boat off the docks and kept it moving. And instead it went from, you know, 5, 5 to 7 to, you know, 10 to 20 overnight like quick right and um i think everybody is making jokes about the guy swimming it's not a guy it's a child come to find out it's a 16 year old kid who swam across the water and i'm like 16 like that's i have a son that's 17 and i have a son that's 15 and I'm just thinking that's my son possibly jumping in the water like, oh, hell no. I'm not just going to sit and stand by and watch. And I'm like, allegedly the kind of water he was swimming in is like the hardest to swim in. And my dude had energy, swum far, all this energy. And it's just like, my guy had the ancestors. He had that mer energy in him. He had them sirens. Them sirens made that call of like, get your butt in the water and go help your brother, right? And I also want to talk about today being divine feminine energy. So I just pulled some cards while we were here sitting here and I got Apollo and I got divine feminine energy. So if you know what Apollo is, Apollo is the sun God, right? And the messenger message, 
this video is a divine message. So we got Apollo showing up. First card that came out, Apollo. Message, right? Messenger, right? And the sun god. And we got divine feminine energy. So the message of today is, today is August 13th, divine feminine energy, the last day of the Lion's Gate portal and the most powerful day of the Lion's Gate portal and the most powerful day of divine feminine energy. So if you're unaware about the number 13, we've been tradition, we've been indoctrinated to believe that 13 is a, uh, a bad day because it's a spiritual day. And yes, 13 is a crazy chaotic energetic day because it's a day of spirituality that's why like you need you should be spiritually protected on the 13th right but it's also a powerful channeling manifesting day because it's a day about divine feminine energy 13 symbolizes the woman so yes it is a day of divine feminine energy and going back into that and apollo telling y'all pay attention to this message because message divine message coming through right divine messenger so i kind of wanted to talk about it because i was like i wonder what the spiritual spiritual implications is going to be right the backlash talking about what's going to come after and i think as much as we laugh and joke and watch all this i'm like i i pray love light and protection over that 16 year old who jumped in the water and swam right because they're putting his business, his information all out there. And I don't know how that's legally possible while he's a child. He's a minor, right? I don't know how his information's allowed to be spread across the internet while he's a minor. That's, you know what I'm saying? Like to protect himself. Because you're talking about now racist groups rallying together and could endanger him and his family's life, right? And I just pray that love, light, protection, and the same ancestors that were channeled to protect that 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 black man as security guard are channeled and protecting that young boy from here on out because uh there's allegedly already talk and rumors going about that you know there's white rallying groups uh getting together about trying to retaliate on the blacks that have been in, identified in the videos and that makes me nervous right the idea that oh because again you can't get embarrassed publicly and this is public. This is like, this is me, global news, right? So no, oh no, we can't let this narrative go out that blacks can now congregate and join together. I just need black people to be on their guard for the next few weeks here, energetically. And even though the energy is shifting, that racism won't stand no more, right? We are going through a spiritual purge. That's why the aliens are revealing themselves to us, by the way. That's why the aliens are here because we are we are too busy always fighting about racism. We're always fighting about entitlement. We're always fighting about mental health, right? The the insanity of shit, right? The the caucasity of things, right? And um it's low vibrational stuff, right? And that's really what that was. That was Cassidy at its finest, not just in entitlement. It was just Cassidy, right? And I mean that in no disrespect to to anybody, because again, I again I I have uh, plenty plenty of white people in my life, very close to me, and in my blood, right? So I, I acknowledge that I am of of a, a melting pot of cultures and identity, but I also will never you know, turn my back on my black culture and my black people who have been crying, having a war cry for decades. We've been out here war crying in these streets, right? So I think I, I'm hoping that there isn't going to be any, you know, spiritual warfare that comes out of this. I am praying that there isn't going to be any physical warfare that comes out of this, right? Because as much as we make jokes, the more we amplify this message that we are no longer standing by, excuse me, that's a spiritual burp confirmation, right? No, are we no longer standing by watching harm come to our people, but we're not going to be beat up publicly. You're not going to keep humiliating us. You're not going to keep ganging up on us, right? And we just stand by and watch the worst to come to pass. We've watched so many people die on camera and I need people, I need to emphasize, stop filming stuff. That's what it looks like to move and to stop just filming shit because you, could, you shouldn't just keep filming stuff. 
If that dude could jump in the water and swim, so can everybody. Because that's what it should be. It should be like a war cry of, oh, hell no, I'm not just going to stand by and watch another, you know, person, you know, get jumped, ganged up on or killed on camera, right? Not on my watch, right? So I think this should be a signal of a spiritual rallying of, no, I am my brother's keeper. I am my sister's keeper, right? And and it not it's not even coming from a racist place. It's just taking a stand of enough is enough and it's time for a change in the sense of, no, y'all not going to keep murdering us on camera. Y'all not going to keep murdering us on and, and traumatizing us. Y'all not going to keep being hateful because y'all been comfortable with that shit for decades. And this idea of we are not our ancestors is bullshit. I am my ancestors. I am every bit of my grandmother. I'm every bit of my great grandmother. I have all of them here with me, sitting with me, even as I speak, honey. Okay. Like imagine all the trauma, my generations, my grandmother, my great grandmother, and my granddad, great granddad, all of that had to live through and witness this shit on a regular basis. And the irony about that boat, like the things in Bama is, let me tell you how spiritually iron, ironic everything was, right? In case you didn't know, because I just did some homework and studying up and watching videos to learn all this. That's why I'm glad I waited a few days. So the first thing that spiritually uh, stands out is that that dock where all this happened was, is where slaves were bought in and transported, Right? to be sold. So that's where they came in, in Alabama, in that part. So you have slave trade energy where slaves have died, been murdered, lynched, all that shit in that spot. On top of you have a boat coming in the river boat where everybody jumped off of and got, you know, where it got crazy and chaotic came from was the river boat was called Harriet. So you think in Harriet Tubman energy, right? So we got Harriet, <laughs> the Harriet Riverboat coming in, more ancestral energy coming through, and then the folding chair, which was created by a black man. So you're talking about all this ancestral, and I'm probably missing some more stuff. There might even be even more ancestral symbology, like that day may be symbolic. I really should have did some homework before I made this video about that day because that day might have some kind of symbology behind it. And if you decide to look it up, let me know in the comments down below if you could find anything, anything from the past, court records, documents, anything could have possibly happened on that day, whether it's 100, 200 years ago, right? There's probably even more ancestral symbology to that video, right? So I feel like the the... Spirit told me no, the answer is no, that there isn't going to be no spiritual backlash from this. So I'm hoping that this answer stays no, that there isn't going to be any spiritual backlash to it. That I think everyone might be divinely protected, right? Um, and live a life of gratitude and humility, right? That we need to start loving each other, but be grateful that no one got hurt, right? And, and be humbled by the fact that we all came together, right? And stood up for each other and was there and um, it didn't end with violence. I'm just grateful, right? That's the gratitude, right? I'm just grateful no one got shot. I'm grateful no one got, you know, murdered. No one got anything from that. And I, and I pray that everyone be protected and covered, you know, from the aftermath because it's real but this is why the aliens are here because we are so mun tied down to all this low vibrational drama shit because we're trauma we're trauma patients and this is what i was just saying like tonight i was like you know i had literally had a download while i was looking in the mirror right i had a few downloads i think there's gonna be another fight caught on camera and it's gonna have something to do with a surfboard Remember, you heard that here first. Seriously, I had, I envisioned someone being hit with a surfboard. Don't ask why, but I literally had a download of somebody fighting with a surfboard. <laughs> Crazy. I did. I Clear as day saw somebody getting hit with a surfboard. Um, I also had a download and a vision of where it was like the, the interpretation of uh, 
you know, this idea that it's, it's racism is always this black and white. It's not just black and white. It's also always this red and blue agenda, right? This, this red and blue side propaganda that always goes on, right? Oh no, you got Democrats versus Republicans. It's always that, that red blue banging on each other, which to me is symbology for you have Republicans who are fear mongers and you have Democrats who are the trauma, you know, the, 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 the trauma ward, right? And that's what we're split up, split up between Republicans are fear mongers and you have Democrats who feed off trauma, right? They're, they're the trauma ward, right? So they amplify our traumas, right? And this is why you should vote for us. Cause aren't you sick of being traumatized? A lot of Republicans are, yeah. And aren't you sick of all, all the, you know, all the hate fear monger? Aren't you sick of this and sick of that? It's just, it plays both sides. No, here's the, the trauma that comes through all that. And here's the hate mongering that comes from once we heal the trauma, now we're angry. So we go back to fear mongering. It's just constant back, back and forth of the hate, the fear, hate, fear, trauma, hate, fear, trauma. And that's where we're at. We're stuck in this vicious cycle of hate, fear, trauma. And I'm kind of over it all. I'm, I'm tired of being on this seesaw of you got to pick a side. How about neither one? I'm tired of both of y'all. Like I'm tired of this energy of, I always, I either got to be afraid. I either got to be hateful or I got to be traumatized. Fuck all three. Can we say we're tired of all three? Like it's, I'm sick of being fighting race wars. Cause we're not that hateful in real life. That's the crazy part. Like, yes, you have towns and cities that are hateful because, again, this narrative of fear-mongering hate. And then you have the trauma war. So that's why you have this shit going so viral because we've been traumatized. Blacks have been the, in the trauma war so long that, no, now we're ready to be hateful. No, now we're ready to fear-monger you. So now you need to be afraid of fuck around and find out culture of this what happens when you get a bunch of like you you think you're going to gang up on a black guy and not fuck around and find out or a black woman for that matter right and she not be protected or he not be protected right this energy of we ain't witnessing no more trauma this is the response to us sitting in the trauma ward so long is this now, now you got the fuck around and find out culture of stop playing with us stop disrespecting us us setting boundaries and that's the truth this is the generation of blacks that is setting boundaries of y'all not gonna disrespect us you're not gonna talk crazy to us and we just sit there and be like do 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 i want to be like you should be do right and there's no there's no there's no repercussions no nah, not in this day and age right so i think it's super important that while we're setting boundaries right to uh, make sure that we aren't, uh, we, we don't feed the hate agenda, right? I, I want us to set healthy boundaries. I'm so proud of the culture to see us coming together and all that. I just don't want us to be hateful because that's the narrative and that's the road they're going to paint us as being hateful as people instead of us just being like enough is enough a time for a change of respect my boundaries. I told you get out my face, right? Don't put your hands on me, right? All, all that shit, right? Like you have no authority over me. I'm not afraid of you, right? So respect my boundaries, right? That you that 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 aura of entitlement you used to have doesn't exist anymore, right? That shit's a fairy tale and it's over, right? The the fairy tale is over of this reality of entitlement doesn't exist anymore the only entitlement that exists is the shit in your household that's the only that that's where entitlement starts ends and begins right is in your house when you out in the streets i advise people to start moving like that shit don't exist anymore right no one owes you shit once you leave your house all right people be like no but people have to be respectful no they don't no they don't i don't even believe somebody need to respect me but I could command it. That's the difference. Because I'm all my ancestors that I demanded and I commanded. No one owes it to me. But I'm damn sure going to command and demand it. See the difference? You know what I mean? That's that's when you set in boundaries. Of, I know I command and demand that you respect my, 
my space, my personal space, right? And that energy, right? So while I also was pulling this, I think we're going to see there's there's this energy going on in Africa, right? Same energy is going on in Africa while they're they're beefing with France, right? With Europe, right? Same energy is going on because I got Africa coming up and I got supernatural coming up. So that's ancestors, that's spirits. This isn't just black spirits. This is all spirits. This is indigenous Indians. This is probably indigenous Mexicans. This is, this is supernatural energy we're going to start seeing at play of spirits who have been traumatized and, and possibly harmed by this dynamic that we've had for a long time in this world of fear mongering, hate mongering, trauma, right? So now we're going to have a lot of supernatural experiences. You, Some of y'all might be experiencing a lot of supernatural shit in your house these days, right? Because the spiritual realm is here. That's what I'm trying to tell people. Like the spirits that are here are tired just as much as the humans, right? So you have the spiritual realm is here. The, the, the spiritual supernatural, that's what I'm saying, supernatural shit, right? That's why we have to be careful to not get caught up in the hate because we leave ourselves vulnerable to darker energies and darker entities at play, right? Because now you're no longer moving as yourself, but this entity that feeds on hate, this entity that feeds on darkness, right? This, this entity that feeds on retribution, right? And it's no longer just, no, I'm, I'm setting this boundary just to protect myself, but it's more so I hate you. And I just want to make sure that people be aware to not feed the hate part. That's all. You know, you could be tired, you could be sick of the bullshit, and you could be standing your ground, setting boundaries. But not all, not all white people feel like that shit. You know what I'm saying? Not all any culture feel that way and would decide to disrespect our boundaries, right? Some people are paying attention, like, no, nah, I respect y'all boundaries. Y'all allowed to defend yourselves. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm breaking my ancestral trauma. I'm breaking my generational curses, right? There's people who are actively out here breaking generational curses. And that's why I believe in giving people grace until you show me who you are, right? I, I'm, I'm listening to who you are. I'm watching who you are. If your ass just stand by, then you are the same shit as your ancestors. If you don't say nothing, you're the same shit as your ancestors. All right. So I, 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 I'm, I'm from the show me state in the sense of show me who you are. All right. Like if you, if you ain't, if you ain't like that, then act accordingly. Right. If you ain't like that, say something. Don't just fucking stand there. All right. And then we got a uh, spiritual glow. So we, we, a lot of us are getting spiritual glow ups. That's why we getting supernatural. A lot of spiritual glow ups, downloads. Like I think our ancestors, it, it, I think black people are radiating a specific glow right now, right? We we are radiating this call to the spiritual realm that we're tired. We've radiated this call and energy of um we we sick of the bullshit. Like we are channeling our ancestors actively. We are tra we are channeling and crying out to the universe to help us that we are standing up for ourselves. I say this all the time. I don't believe God wants to see you suffer. God's just waiting for you to stand up for yourself. That's the difference. God can't intervene or the gods, these deities, these energies can't intervene. They can't force you to use your voice for good. They can't void. They can't force you to step in and stop being a bystander in your own life and a bystander in other people's lives. When you see bad shit popping off, they have to wait for you to want to change shit. If that makes sense right? They can't intervene until we decide to say for ourselves, um, nah, fuck all that. You know what I'm saying? And then they step in to help us. Even if it means if someone dies for, for freedom, then that, then, then the, then isn't that the greatest cause, right? That you live the life of liber helping liberate people. Because I'm serious. Some people live their whole lives and don't and, and will never do nothing great in their life or, or never do anything that's in their divine purpose out of fear because they've been trapped in fear mongering and trauma, been in a trauma war too long, right? 
but I also got a wealthy man coming up. So we may see somebody who's very wealthy step up and say something in all this, all this energy, or maybe be donating is probably possibly donating to bail people out. So I, I felt like I just wanted to talk about that, the, the, the spiritual stuff of, you know, what's playing out. And I just want everybody to be safe. Make sure y'all say prayers over yourself. Say prayers over them people in Alabama. Um, prayer is a powerful thing. I don't care what your faith and religion is. Just say a prayer for them. All right. Um, say a prayer for yourself. Right. And also, you know, say a prayer that, look, I'm not going to get caught up in hate and fear mongering. And I'm coming out of the trauma ward. I'm setting boundaries and you'll radiate this energy of you won't attract that kind of energy. That's what I'm saying. Ain't nobody going to lose their shit on you because you're going to radiate, fuck around and find out energy. You know what I mean? When you start saying, I am my ancestors, ain't nobody saying that shit to you. Ain't nobody going to talk to you crazy when you channeling that fuck around and find out energy. F fuck around and find out I am my ancestors energy. You know what I mean? Look at this. I'm always with you. Look at that. I told you. That's the spirit realm. So all the cards y'all see that are in purple is spirit realm. I'm always with you with love. Told you. Supernatural. I'm always with you. Look at that. So I wanted to see what the spiritual ramifications was of this. This is it. They're telling you. I'm always with you. They here, baby. That shit was a spiritual thing. Mm -hmm, look, selfless, always giving. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, this was for me. I got called a great talker. <laughs> I, got, I, got, I got called a great talker by the spirit realm. Thank you, spirit realm. I'm trying. I'm trying to use my voice for good. So at the end of the day, you guys, I just want y'all to protect yourself say a prayer for yourself say a prayer to your ancestors ask your ancestors to always walk with you um say a prayer over them people in alabama shit was wild um keep your hands to yourself respect people's boundaries respect yourself respect others mind your business because i feel like that's another thing mind your business but if you ever see your brother or sister out here in these streets in need say something step up i don't care what culture you are if you see something wrong, say something. If you see something foul, say something. The years of being bystanders, y'all, are done. We're no longer just standing by watching people being traumatized. I don't care who it is. Do the right thing. All right? Stop moving like AI bots and start moving like moving like a spirit. All right? Would you want to, would you want your spirit to be harmed? Would you want your spirit to be traumatized? Say something. All right. So with that being said, I'm going to wrap up this video, start wrapping up this video. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope y'all enjoy these conversations that I have and uh, the, the, the kind of the reading, the energy, because I wanted to see what the energy was a little bit like for uh those people and it was spiritual it's it's spiritual like i got supernatural and all that like yeah no the energy was like pop off it was it was it was spiritual supernatural energy around them um divine messengers it was a, it was an intentional it was intentional to send the message of stop disrespecting black people because look at these cards i y'all saw me just shuffle in front of you right First of all, it was divine feminine energy. So that Harriet boat, that energy, right? That 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 powerful divine feminine energy is here today with me, right? But Apollo, the messenger, the sun god coming up, all right? Telling us to be grateful, right? And to live a life of humility, right? And we'll always be covered with love because the same thing is happening in Africa right now, right? This this black people, I, I think this is really telling that Africa came up while I'm trying to read the energy of Alabama. It's like same energy. That's what it's saying. Because there's supernatural energy protecting, watching over us, right? Watching, observing, giving us a spiritual glow up, right? Spiritual glow up happening. Letting us know they always with us, right? With love always with us all we got to do is call on them all right so 
with that being said i hope y'all enjoyed my little ted talk be safe out here you guys do the right thing set boundaries every day before you leave a house say a prayer that hey I honor my ancestors. I thank you ancestors that walk with me. May no weapon forged against me shall prosper because you walk with me. All right. And and you ain't gonna you ain't gonna meet and attract that kind of energy, right? Stay out the drama. You know, try to de-escalate before escalate pop off energy. But um just be aware of the energy. There's a spiritual shift happening majorly. And blacks are getting a a major spiritual glow up and it's about time we're going to start using our voices more you're going to start seeing activations for good and um the thing is the energy i always feel from black people is we ain't the antagonizers like you know white people are so afraid of black people retaliating like no we retaliate when we're disrespected but we aren't looking to like, we ain't out here looking to start the race war. So, if if y'all don't want a race war, stop looking for it. That's, that's really the message. If you ain't looking for a race war, stop instigating it. Stop starting it. We can get along if we learn to respect each other's, you know, cultures uh, and, and respect that I am my ancestors and I'm not putting up with disrespect and bullshit. Respect my space. You know what I mean? Respect me as a human being and I'll respect you as a human being. And it's just really that simple. It's just a respect thing, right? Because we're not going to sit by and watch each other get harmed, right? So I send y'all big love. I send y'all um, a lot of love, a lot of hugs, a lot of encouragement, um, like I said, this video was is not to cause racial divide, but it's also just to be honest about like, look, you're going to get the energy you give in this world, right? Because black people are always selfless in giving. This is really to me how black people are. We are so selfless and always giving. But at some point, even the selfless giving person gets sick of giving all the time only to get disrespect uh, the shaft end of the deal, you know what I mean? Things like that. So I think it's time that we be celebrated and boo loved on, right? So I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, turn on that notification bell. Again, like, share, subscribe, turn on that notification bell. I would love to have more engaging spiritual conversations of things that's going on in the world because there's always spiritual behind every every physical action there's a spiritual action somewhere so hopefully you guys are enjoying my new content i will start going live having these conversations with you guys doing some fun lives talking about all the stuff that y'all want to talk about because y'all always like anyone that's here from the days of when i streamed on mixer or twitch or things like that y'all know y'all have always loved when i had caddy talk and we need a new wendy williams and i'm happy here to fill that role but in a much more powerful spiritual way i always feel like wendy never used her platform in an empowering way it was always just too messy and that's why i heard you know, her downfall was messy, right? And I pray for Wendy. I do. I pray for her mental health because she's being spiritually attacked. But I, I'm, I'm looking to move from a much more spiritual place and empowering place, not just from a messy, destructive place, right? So with that said, you guys, I'll see y'all next time. Bye.